So I come from, I'm one of ten kids, I, I'm the second. Um, my parents are Catholic, they come from Victoria, they moved over to WA a year before I was born and in the same time they were parishioners of Mirabuka, so they heard the catechesis from the catechumen away and that's how I was brought up and that's how I knew the church. So in the parish of Mirabuka, going there as a little kid and following my parents in the, the journey of faith, that is the neocatechumen way. So yeah, I suppose in the way like we're, we're, we're always confronted with the Word of God and we grow up kind of being nurtured by that and responding to that. So the basic question is always usually what is this Word saying to you in your life, the Gospel? Or, and that helps you to understand different events. And so yeah, as I was growing up as a teenager, like any other kid in Perth, um, yeah, I suppose looking like for life in the normal places. I used to surf, play a lot of footy, hanging out with my mates. But at the end of the day, like I found, you know, there was some I suppose difficulties in life and deeper questions in terms of suffering and um, yeah and I began to to hear that word and see how that word resonated inside of me and how I suppose the joy the happiness that came from knowing I was loved as I was um, really resonated you know in a time where you look for I suppose a lot of love from your mates or from girlfriends or whatever I found that the love that the church was announcing this kind of unconditional love through in the person of Christ is what really could give me meaning, could give an answer to those some of those deeper kind of questions. And yeah, so as I went through, I went to university and things like that. I suppose that was always a bit in the background. And then, um, yeah, at a certain point when I was really looking for an answer, there was a, a strong situation in my family, a family situation. And um, that was, it was there that I began to see, well, God could be speaking to me in a different way. And hearing this news like that, God has an answer to the sufferings that I was going through um, and that suffering that was in my family um, can be a message and a good news for other people as well. And so I began to think, if, what if God was calling me to, to be you know, a missionary or maybe someone that could announce this to other people? Um, that really, first of all, it's, there was an element of fear but also a big element of excitement. And yeah, so that's where it kind of, it began, I, I've come from a big family as I said, so naturally I suppose I wanted a family myself, have a wife and have a kids, it's kind of the, just the normal way that you go into. But started to think, what if God had a different plan? And um, So yeah, I started to pray to be open and then here I am. My biggest question was what would my girlfriend think? My old girlfriend, I'd broken up with her about a year before and what would my closest mates think? How weird is that? Because these days, um, it's not really yeah, a very common thing, you know, vocations in the church have slowed down a little bit and um, yeah, so that was probably one of the biggest fears, fears inside of me, one of the biggest hurdles to get over is to get over that impression of other people, you know, yeah, which has always been a dominant thing in my life, how do other people see me, but I started to think, look, if God was calling me to this, then don't be afraid, just follow. Um, so this is, I've been, this is coming, I'm beginning my 10th year of seminary, yeah, I spent one year beforehand in an Aboriginal community, so that was really good, it was really the seedbed of the vocation, a small community. Um, so yeah, but I've, I've been in the, in the church since I was a, a little kid and uh, obviously walking with my own community since I was about 13 years old, so that's been kind of fundamental for the, for the vocation, for the journey that I still walk with, we still meet at least twice a week and yeah, reflect on the Word of God. And, yeah, grow in faith in that community, in a small community. Plenty of challenges, yeah, the seminary is full of challenges. Obviously we live in a flight tight community, all men. So, you know, you have your usual kind of, oh, I'm, I have six brothers, so I'm, I'm used to living around a lot of people, sharing my room and stuff. Um, the timetable was very different from the start. You go from uni in your own life and going for a surf when you want or going out for a beer to a kind of, you know, uh, regimented life. We eat lunch, at, we'll pray first at one o'clock every day, then we eat lunch. And so there's a real structure to the life in the seminary. That was a bit of a struggle at the start. Um, then also, yeah, things like obedience and, you know, uh, the study sometimes to enter into, sometimes you don't see kind of straight away what use they're going to be for you in your life. but you know, yeah, if God gives, has given, continues to give the kind of grace to do it, then it becomes something that's light and even something beautiful. Probably the biggest standout, I spent two years in Papua New Guinea in a little place called Alatau, which is on the eastern side of the mainland of Papua New Guinea. And just, yeah, it was an exposure to a different kind of life, a different reality of the church. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a different country. So um, that was certainly a highlight for me, seeing how as well, how it was possible to be in mission, to be good news to other people, 
as well just seeing it, yeah the wider reality of the church seeing a church that's very much like alive vibrant different gave me a lot of hope um, to see how God works differently in different places and to, you know just the joy of being a part of that was just phenomenal like I was reading over my diary the other day and it's just every day was was different and every day that you walked outside you knew you're in a different place for a different reason so it was beautiful yeah so first of all, becoming a deacon, I suppose for me is like, you know, it's the fulfillment of what God promised, you know, at baptism and the call that he's doing. So obviously you're a minister of the word and you become minister of the sacrament as well. Um, so yeah, being able to share the word with others, we'll have to start doing homilies and proclaiming the gospel. So a word that's been a big part of my life is, is something that's proclaimed and shared among the Christian assembly. That's something that's, yeah, I suppose that God in, in our baptism that we're promised is, is kind of coming to fruition there, which is something beautiful. Then on becoming a priest, obviously it goes to, you know, a, a different level and there's the other sacraments that you will able, be able to celebrate and participate in as well. I think that's very exciting to be able to share in other people's lives in a different way, you know, um, and that for me is what, yeah, is what is really exciting and I hope the Lord can help and accompany me with with those things, yeah. It's something that you think of from, I suppose, from the day that you go into the seminary or even a bit before, like, what if, you know, I remember my best mate was asking me, like, so you want to be a priest now dressed in all the robes and things? And at the time I was like, no, that sounded so foreign to me. I was never really an altar boy or in singing in the choir. It was not really my cup of tea. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something that kind of grows on you and you develop into, I suppose. And yeah, you, and that you live day by day. It's not. It's a time of discernment, so I'm grateful that I've been able to be in the seminary for all these years and yeah, and just follow God in a kind of daily way, wherever He leads. Yeah. I'd love to grow in, in like personally in my own spiritual relationship with God and with others and then yeah, just connections with, with people, with the church, like in terms of achievements, I don't know how to say concretely like what what that would mean, because it's an adventure for me. So where, wherever it brings me, I'd love to be able to go in mission somewhere around the world. I would, um, yeah, just the people that you meet. I remember John Paul II, there was one line that he said that struck me. He said, like, Christ wants to meet many people and go many places through you. And that's something that's remained with me since, since the early days of the vocation.